I'm going to open the meeting for our second budget workshop for the city of Floresville, being held on the 31st day of July 2014 at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Our first will be our invocation by Mr. Kidogan. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> Here. <laughs> I did ask. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> Lord, we thank you very much for allowing us to be here, uh, arrive safely, and we ask that we, uh, you deliver us home safely, and we ask that you uh, continue to bless our lives and uh, be with our extended family members at home. Uh, we ask that uh, you uh, allow us to make wise decisions and uh, uh, ask good questions, and um, uh, we, we, we ask this in, in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have an established forum, Councilman Rodriguez, Councilman Guerrero, Councilwoman Castillo. Now everyone will face the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Certificates obligation 
Um, uh, and just to give you a little bit of background, because since that time, there's been uh, not only a lot of movement with the elected officials, but also with the administrators since that point. And so uh, we're invited here by the administration to provide, again, just uh, background information as to what happened then, and, and uh, more importantly, what, what needs to happen moving forward. Uh, to to make sure that uh, things are aligned correctly, that your long-term debt is something that the um, uh, the, the revenue stream that we anticipate coming in is something that um, uh, is going to be enough to go ahead and cover uh, your long-term obligations. And so we prepared a, a presentation here, and it's it's pretty lengthy. And, and um, uh, I, y'all, I, 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 there was eleven copies, so sorry if not everybody uh, got. Oh, okay, great. Okay, great. We'll, we'll, we'll get you all some. Um, but we're just going to take it page by page, and uh, if you have any uh, questions, just you know, feel free to stop me. And, and uh, uh, since it's a workshop format and everything, I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer the, the questions that, that you may have. Yes, yes. Uh, we have. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm Mr. Talley from 4A. Yes. This is Tang from 4A. This is Tommy Baker, the executive director for 4A. And Andy. Andy Eubanks. Eubanks. Andy Eubanks. Oh, He's right. here from 4B as well. He's okay, a chairman. Okay, great. Tell me you're competitive. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just going to start in the, the, the first page after the, the cover sheet. Um, uh, this is these are your general obligation bonds. Um, the the city, when it issues debt, um, it could issue debt uh, by um, securing it with your Avalon property taxes, which is the most secure mechanism, the safest mechanism for bond investors. They 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 they, they want their debt service payments obviously to be repaid. Um, and so whenever you issue debt, um, uh, the bond investor typically prefers that that debt be secured and backed up by the city's property taxes because as a governmental entity, property taxes are more uh, secure than as opposed to, let's say, the bonds being secured by your utility system revenues. You know, because utility system revenues, you could have a, a wet year one year and you're not going to get those revenues coming in. Typically, the property values and taxes are, are of a more um, a stable a stream of revenues for government entities. So, when you see um, uh, cities that have general obligation bonds, basically that's what it means. These are the debt issuances that the collateral or the security mechanism for a city is your avalorm or your property taxes. That that's the last. Uh, collateral line or security mechanism that if, uh, if a bondholder doesn't receive their payment and uh, the issuer defaults, uh, then they have essentially legal recourse to uh, force you essentially after obviously lawsuits and whatnot, uh, they essentially have the right to force the entity to raise its property taxes sufficient enough to repay their principal and interest obligations. And so whenever you see GO bonds or general obligation, that, that's what it means. That's a security mechanism for the bond investor. So there's a few ways that a city can do this. A city doesn't, um, unlike a school district, if they want to issue bonds, they have to hit you um, bond elections. Well, cities here in the state of Texas have a little bit more flexibility on um, issuing debt so that it could address some capital infrastructure needs that they have. Um, there's different things, uh, uh, you know, general obligation bonds have to be voted in, but then a city could use certificates of obligation, which the city has, essentially to address the same type of need and use essentially the same type of financing mechanism uh, as opposed to if you were just to vote it in like a general obligation bond. Uh, then you also have a more common one is called a, a tax note that the city has also issued. Uh, tax notes, um, uh, again, allow you to address any capital needs, but the limitation there is that you have to repay those notes within a seven-year period after you receive uh, those funds. So that's just generally the, 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 the three uh, common, most popular rule, uh, 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 tools that cities use to go into, to conduct the financing to get uh, capital to address its needs. So right now, there's three uh, general obligation bonds, as we call them, outstanding for the city of Floresville. 
the first one, uh, and, and in fact, let me go from the bottom up. The, the tax notes here is 2008. We have one final payment that's going to be for this upcoming fiscal year. That payment will be made on uh, March 1st, 2015. After that, that goes off of the books. Um, then uh, we have the certificates obligation. We'll, we'll talk more in depth about uh, the original issuance amount was $8.5 million, and that was issued in 2008. Those are certificates obligation. Um, originally, that was a 20-year term to be paid off in, on September 1st, 2028. Right now, the balance is uh, just over $3 million. Uh, the source of repayment for that obligation uh, right now, as it stands, it's 56% uh, of the annual principal and interest payments due on this security, the certificates obligation series 2008. Uh, the city is responsible for that because that was their initial portion of that debt. They used that for various improvements uh, throughout the city. The other participant on the certificates obligation and, and, and right now is the 4B Corporation. And right now, the three point Oh, uh, four or five million dollars. Um, the 4B Corporation owes 44 percent of that obligation. And uh, uh, originally, when we issued these uh, COs of 8.5 million dollars, the other participant was, and the majority participant was the 4A Corporation, who used those proceeds to uh, construct the community center. Uh, and then that leads us up to the first one here on top, is the, what we call general obligation refunding bond. Basically, um, uh, we took, in 2010, uh, the 4A Corporation's portion of that uh, CO's uh, 2008 issuance, the $8.5 million, um, and we stripped that part out um, uh, and, and issue what we call the general obligation refunding bond. Uh, and then we state the reasons why that happened a little bit later in the presentation. So right now, the principal amount that's owed essentially by the city uh, because again, the, the security mechanism was at lower taxes is uh, just over $8.5 million. And of course, the initial intent for the GO refunding bond that uh, that was going to be 100% to be paid by the 4A Corporation because that was the original plan in 2008. If you go to the next page, ladies and gentlemen, this is now page uh, uh, three. Uh, this is just a, 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 an illustration, a graphical illustration as to your general obligation debt service requirements. These are the principal and interest payments that are due for those three um, financings that I talked about on the previous page. Um, as you can see here, um, uh, currently it, it's just, a, a, just over $400,000 that we're paying and right now we're going into the 2015 fiscal year. And obviously the, 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 the numbers of concern and the bar of concern is what's going to happen in 2016 uh, because obviously the, the payments go, um, are elevated quite a bit, uh, but the intent was to come back in 2015 a year and restructure, do a final restructuring on the um, uh, community center because this is mostly the community center obligation there when the, uh, as the debt goes up. Um, determine where the sales tax is next year and then better plan on a long-term basis what the 4A corporation could actually afford and we provide here numbers uh, for that. And so uh, those three obligations, this is right now the way it's structured, uh, but the intent is to not uh, keep it at the $1.3 million mark uh, for, for 2016 and the next five years. And so the, the next page here, page four, um, the, the obligations that I shared with you before, the general obligation bonds, uh, those were issued essentially by the city. The city um, utilized basically its credit standing. Uh, it utilized its own security mechanism of Avalon taxes to issue those bonds. So when the bondholder bought those bonds, um, again, the last security mechanism was for the, the city to have to repay it uh, using its Avalon taxes if other revenue streams weren't meeting the obligations. Um, and so be, in 2007, the 4A Corporation um, uh, decided to purchase the land where the community center currently uh, sits on. And so in 2007, um, the 4A Corporation actually itself, um, uh, and not involving the city, issued those obligations uh, directly on their own. Uh, now, of course, the city still had to give consent, but the city legally is not required to make those obligations if the 4A corporation cannot meet its debt service payments. And so that's completely on 
uh, the 4A Corporation to utilize its own credit, its own sales tax to make uh, those repayments for the sales tax revenue bonds series 2007. Again, the proceeds were used to buy the land that the Carmina Center currently sits on. Uh, the balance outstanding for that was uh, is $915,000. Uh, the original term was for a 30-year repayment period, essentially almost like a mortgage. Um, these bonds here were sold uh, not as what we call tax-exempt bonds, which is what most government entities do, uh, which are allowed to do in federal law. These were sold uh, using a, a taxable uh, a, a status on these bonds. The reason why the Ford Corporation decided to do that back in 2007, because the intent was... Um, or I guess the hope was in the future that not only will the community centers sit on that land, but you know, what if you know, private entities came and, and wanted to you know, uh, establish a business of some sort there. And so just to protect the city, give you flexibility, or the 4A Corporation give you flexibility to actually invite private businesses uh, to build something on that land, we had to sell the bonds uh, at, at using a taxable status. The reason why is because when you issue as a government entity a tax exempt bond, 90% uh, of those proceeds has to be for uh, projects where there's going to be a public and general use, meaning that me, I could go to the land or go to that facility, I don't have to pay for it, and, and, and so that's the only way you can use tax, tax exempt bonds. So we, we, to give the 4A Corporation more flexibility to attract businesses, it was issued taxable. That's not to say that it has to stay taxable for the whole life of the bonds if, if you want. And you know that you know maybe private entities aren't going to come on that land in, in the future, in the long-term future. You could always refinance these bonds and then get a tax-exempt rate on these bonds because tax-exempt uh, bonds usually carry a lower interest rate. And so um, that's what happened with the 4A Corporation when it issued its first issuance in 2007, and that was a self-tax rate. Mr. Kennedy, yes. would the would the Bonds that San Marcos issued for their community center, which have a hotel co-located there, those had to be of the same kind of taxable? Uh, yes, sir. If, if um, uh, in that case, I, 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 I do not work with them, but I'm assuming they are. Usually because, I think it's Embassy Suites, I think right. that's on there. Because that's a private corporation, and of course, they're not going to be letting you stay in those rooms for free as a, as a, as a citizen of San Marcos. And there's a private activity going on. Um, at least that portion, the hotel portion, the embassy suites that they, they control, most likely than not, is a taxable bond. But maybe the convention center that's attached to it, maybe that section was issued with tax exempt bonds. Is but if you were going to put something like that here, that would fit under these bonds? Yes, sir. The yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the reason why the tax bill uh, was attached to it is because uh, it gives you that flexibility to invite private corporations if they so wanted to it and, 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 and put something on that land that you use taxable bonds to purchase. Had we done just a tax exempt bond, then you 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 would have to segregate it out. Yes, sir. You you'd have to uh, segregate it out, and, and and so here it just gives us flexibility. But again, if, if y'all don't foresee anything in the future, a private entity going on that land, then uh, the four A corporation has the right to refinance these bonds and, and make them all tax exempt. And so right. this is just one parcel, correct? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and one other question. We don't have any tax, excuse me, any analog tax backup on this. No, sir. It's pure sales tax. Yes, sir. It's pure sales tax. Uh, the legal term of these bonds are sales tax revenue bonds, and so that's all it is. It's just sales tax. That as a bond investor, if I bought these bonds, I'm not expecting the city to use its Avalon tax to, to pay for it, because really it was the Ford Corporation that issued these bonds and the security mechanism that they assured me for repayment on these bonds are the sales tax collections that they receive on an annual basis. And what's the rate on these bonds? These, uh, the, the rate is, is just over 7%, which in, in 2007, when you look at taxable bonds, that was, that was a, 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 an attractive rate. But again, taxable bonds are going to be a higher interest rate uh, because I'm not getting that tax-free income as a bond investor. Yeah. What is the annual payment on debt? It, it and other three debt. The other three debts? No, no. The other three general obligations. Yes, sir. What the and, and, and maybe if you all want to turn to the to, uh, two pages down, that, that'll show you. Right. 
And uh, page five there, that's just a, a graphical look at it. And actually, to give you a better sense about where the repayments are coming from, if you go to page seven, that'll give you the numbers as opposed to just a graph. But page seven here, this is now the uh, self-supporting debt service by fund source. Basically, we talked about initially that the city has three general obligation debt outstanding. Well, um, when it issued those bonds, legally it gave the bond investor as the last security mechanism or collateral uh, Avalorn property tax collections. But the, the, what the state allows is that if you issue, let's say, certificates obligations, uh, which we did in 2008, you're not required to use property taxes to repay the investor. You could use any available legal funds to pay that investor. So sometimes what cities do and what we did here, but I'm just going to say an example. Let's say I was a, a city. We issued a certificates obligation. Uh, we're working on one at, at, at Universal City. They're going to issue certificates obligation for $3 million, but they're not going to use property taxes to repay that debt. What they're going to use, because um, those proceeds are going to go towards their utility system, they're going to use all the utility system revenue that are coming in to repay those certificates of obligation. The reason why they do that um, is because they want to get the lowest interest rate possible. And what's going to get you the lowest interest rate possible uh, is that security mechanism, mechanism that all bond investors want, which is the avalorum or the property taxes. Because to me, as a bond investor, that's the safest revenue source. You're going to get your money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and if the utility system isn't producing its revenues, then legally, as a bond investor, and I, let's say, sue the city uh, because they haven't been paying me, then I could force them to use yeah, them Avalon. Yeah. And because, it, because I have that extra security as a bond investor, I'm going to get you a better interest rate as opposed if you were to issue utility system revenue bonds, where I don't have that opportunity to uh, go after your property taxes, basically. And so people utilize the security mechanism of Avalon property taxes essentially at the end of the day just to get the best interest rate possible for that financing. So they're using both and the backup. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but right now, and, and for that, that was just an example for that particular city, um, they plan for the next uh, 20 years for that financing to only utilize the utility system revenue. To make the payments. Yes, sir, to make the annual principal and interest payments. But if for some reason there's shortfall or they, they default, you know, then legally as a bond investor, I could tell them you need to raise your tax rate enough to tap into those property taxes and, and pay me the, the, the money that you owe me, basically, moving forward. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, is it very expensive when we're refinancing these things? Um, there, there, there's, there's costs associated to, to any type of financing. Uh, you know, yes, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm asking for some sort of ballpark figure. Ballpark? Yeah, it depends. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. It, it depends on the the amount you borrow. Uh, but let's say it's a it's a five million uh, dollar transaction. Uh, typically, uh, professionals that work on that financing, it's a team. It's not only us as financial advisors. You have financial advisors. You have bond attorneys that have to prepare the legal documents. You have a rating agency. You have to pay for the marketing documents, the called official statements, uh, and even the tax attorney general, because they're the final approval mechanism for uh, issuances, also gets a fee. So it, it's a combination of fee that we call cost of issuance. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, let's say for for, uh, and it's going to be ballpark, uh, uh, but let's say for a five million dollar transaction and it's going to be a, a general obligation type of bond. Those tend to be cheaper than these sales tax revenue bonds. Um, uh, and again, it's just ballpark, but we could go and calculate it for you and, and return that to the city. But you just, can you give me a figure right now? Ball, yeah, a, a ballpark for, for a $5 million bond, it could range from anywhere from, let's say, sixty dollars to $80,000 for all of the costs uh, associated with that. Um, and, and it also, you know, depends, um, uh, you know, if we have to do other things like set up a, a very specific escrow account and so, and we have to get accountants to do that. So it, it really depends. But ballpark for city finances, that's what you typically see. Now, uh, other professionals um, charge different amounts, um, uh, but that's typically what I've seen in my practice um, uh, for the whole cost of issuance. That's, just, that's not just what financial advisors get. You have to pay all these other professionals. But ballpark, that, that's typically what we see then. Um, okay, the without the insurance. 
Uh, that, that's typically without the insurance. There's also, yeah, there's also a way if, if let's say I wanted to market my bonds with a better interest rate um, uh, uh, and, and, and I wanted to use basically somebody else's credit basically to market my bonds and issue my bonds. There's a, there's a product out there in the bond world called municipal bond insurance. And basically as a city, if, if I want to get a, a better uh, interest rate on my bond, I have to use basically a better rating, a uh, uh, higher rating to market my bonds to bond investors. So um, uh, if I wanted to do that, I could, if the cost benefit analysis worked my way, I could buy a municipal bond policy or an insurance policy basically, what we call it, or it's a credit enhancement. Basically, I'm gonna pay this company, this insurance company, um, uh, whatever they, they charge me, uh, so that I could use their higher credit rating so that when I go out to the bond market, I'm gonna get the, the, the lowest possible interest rate because the higher your credit rating, the lower rate that you're gonna attain on your bond issuance. So, so that eighty or $90,000 doesn't include that? Actually, you bond. would have to put that on top of that. Um, and it just depends on the city. Some cities are of quality credit rating that they might not, it might be a waste of money for them and they don't need it. Uh, but then there's other cities that don't have as high credit rating uh, and, and, and they might need to buy it just to get the best interest rate possible or they're, they're gonna look at higher rates. One, one thing to keep in mind too, um, there's been um, uh, two different type of sell methods basically used at the city in the past for its bond issuances. Um, you could sell bonds in the public market, meaning that you're giving uh, any investor throughout the nation an opportunity to buy your bonds, whether they're here in Texas or New York or California. That's what we call a, a, a public sale method. Um, in that method, there's more fees associated because I have to do more things. I have to get a rating, I have to do an official statement as we call, uh, call it. Um, uh, and, 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 and then the other method that was originally utilized here at the city is what we call a private placement sale method where um, I'm not gonna go towards uh, and try to attract different bond investors for my particular bond issuance. I'm gonna go probably directly to a, a bank or a mutual fund that's willing to negotiate with me and, and they're gonna take in those bonds and the intent is to keep those bonds in their own portfolio um, and not resell them for a profit to other bond investors basically. Because in the public market, that's what it's about. That's the way these bond folks make money they buy the bonds initially from the city, but the way they make money is either now or in the future, they resell them to other investors for a profit, basically. And so, so it just depends on which method. The private placement method uh, tends to be cheaper. Uh, sometimes might even get you better interest rates uh, because sometimes these buyers might have a local presence and they, they know the situation the city's in and may know the credit a little bit better. And so they um, uh, uh, you know might have more incentive to give the city a better rate. So, so again, depending on which method you use, I'm sorry, going, going on too long, but depending on the methods you use, it's, it's gonna depend on, on, on how much you pay because in the private placement sell method, those type of buyers tend to do more homework on the, on the, on the issuer of those bonds. And, and, and typically, you don't have to buy bond insurance uh, for a private placement method, a sell method. It's typically, you know, that, that investor will probably know the city intimately enough to make its own credit decision um, and see how safe that, that investment is. So. so it's like an ongoing pain thing. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. It, it's not. Uh, the, the cost of issuance, it's a one time payment, uh, and, and it's an industry standard, not only for financial advisors, for bond attorneys, and all the related parties that help you issue bonds. Um, it's it's, it's uh, uh, really industry standard where we're only paid on a contingency basis, so if the, the, the city doesn't issue those bonds successfully, nobody's paid, even despite the amount of work you do. But we're only paid at closing uh, of that transaction. So it's just a one-time fee that the city will pay their financial advisor, the bond attorney, the attorney general, the, the, the rating agency. That's typically paid at closing and only at closing. And 99% of the time, those fees are gonna be rolled into the loan. Um, uh, because you know, cash is king, cash is precious. You know, uh, people would rather, you know, Roll it into the loan, just like folks that you know might you know get into a mortgage. A lot of times, those closing fees are going to be rolled into the loan. It's, it's pretty rare when they put something up front, but you know, but that's just an example there. So typically, what you see with these governmental entities like a city is that those fees are going to be rolled into the loan, but they're only going to be paid at one time, and that's going to be at closing when the city receives its funds. 
Um, the same thing for the bond insurance. Uh, that's also just a one-time uh, insurance policy that the city pays at closing as well. Um, and, and again, it's all rolled into the loans and it's just paid one, one time. The, the only ongoing uh, payment that the city makes is its repayment of principal and the payment of interest on, uh, on that annual basis, however it is scheduled. But yes, ma'am, it's just one time that the city pays that. You're welcome. Um, uh, page seven here, you can see what, what, uh, what we call uh, self-supporting debt, basically. And what that means in the bond uh, world is that because as a city I issue these general obligation bonds and I'm giving the investors uh, the secured mechanism of my abalone taxes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not required to use those abalone taxes or property taxes to repay that debt. I might uh, make it so that the uh, utility system is paying some of it. Uh, maybe the 4A, the 4B want to go in partnership with this financing. They're going to pay a proportion of it with their sales tax. And so if whatever is being paid uh, for that debt that's not uh, property taxes, that's what we call self-supporting, meaning it's going to come from another uh, uh, security mechanism or revenue stream coming in. So we, we, we show this uh, because although the tax notes and the certificate obligations um, are, are considered general obligation bonds, um, the only thing that's being paid out of the general fund, which it, it receives those revenue sources for its general fund from property taxes or abalone taxes, the only um, uh, debt issuances that are being covered uh, by property taxes or the initial intent was the tax note series 2008, and then the city's portion of the Certificates of Obligation Series 2008 as well. When the Series of 2008 issuance was issued, again, it was a, a partnership between the city, the 4A, and the 4B corporations. And so, on an annual basis, the intent for the city to utilize its general fund or have loan taxes were only for this particular dollar amount that's listed here on the left-hand box. The, the 4A corporation, although it only has issued by itself uh, one bond issuance, and that was a sales tax revenue bond series 2007. They also are partnering, though, and are responsible for the uh, uh, general obligation refunding bond series 2008. And so that's why you see there for the middle box, this is the 4A Corporation's um, debt obligations. Uh, this is for the revenue bond series 2007. As you can see here, again, that was a 30 year bond initially. The average annual payments is just about $85,000 per year uh, for principal and interest payments. And then we have the general obligation refunding bond series 2010, the next column where this for the first five years of payment plan was $100,000 per year. And then it was gonna jump to $1.3 million a year, but the intent wasn't to keep it there. The intent was to look to see where we're at in 2015 to see if things got improved and better with your sales tax collection. At that point, make a determination and then, and then restructure those bonds one final time. To, yes, sir, yes, sir. One final time, and, and just to make sure that there's enough sales tax collections coming in from the Foray Corporation to cover this debt. So again, the, the, the intent um, and the reason why it was kept short initially in 2010 was to try to get the, the, the city and the Foray Corporation the lowest interest rate possible because the shorter the term is on your debt, the lower the interest rate is going to be. It's just like a 15-year mortgage versus a 30-year mortgage. It's a 15-year mortgage is going to have a, a lower interest rate. So at least for the next uh, nine years, what we want is we want to get the city the, the best interest rate possible. But because um, in 2010, when the restructuring happened, uh, the, the economy still wasn't rebounding. The sales tax growth that was expected here in the city of Floresville was not coming in. It was pretty stagnant. And so the city and the 4A Corporation needed a little bit of time to see if those uh, sales tax revenue growth was going to come in like everybody had anticipated back in 07 and 08 when things were just humming along. Nobody really foresaw the economic slowdown that occurred in 2008-2009 and led to some stagnation in the sales tax collection. And then we'll get a little bit more into that too. Um, but, but the last uh, box on the right hand side, um, these are the, this is the uh, 4B sales tax, uh, what they owe currently. Um, th this is only including uh, a, a, a public issuance type of debt or, or if they use a bond uh, to go into that debt. It does not include any uh, bank loans that the, the 4B corporation may or, or have on its books. This is just you know, public information type debt. And so right now, um, at least in terms of a, in a form of a bond, the 4B Corporation um, is participating in the Certificates Obligation Series 2008 and through an agreement back then. 
um, uh, the, the 4B Corporation uh, is sharing in this much uh, uh, in its principal and interest payments. And these are all fixed rates, and so these payments won't change unless um, uh, folks decide to pay off bonds sooner or there's a refinancing that's conducted. And so these are the fixed uh, payments unless there's a refinancing in the future for the 4B and the city. And the 4B rate is sales tax rate is? Uh, they're getting the, the, the basically it comes out to pretty much about fifty percent of the sales tax coming in. Yeah, uh, what's the actual half sales? Half percent of sales tax. It's half cent. Yeah, half cent. Half cent. No, it's a half cent. Half cent. And the same thing for four A. The four A is half of that. It's half quarter. Yes, it's a quarter. I'm not sure about four A. Yeah, it's, 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 it's half of it's half of the four B. Yeah, or oh, say it's a, yeah, because yeah, the city the gets a quarter. Four year, four yeah, the city gets a quarter, the four uh, A gets a quarter, and the four B gets a half. And then that's the way the, the dollar amounts break out each year. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know the rationale? Um, we've always kind of wondered on, uh, from the four B side mm -hmm. what the rationale of the 44% uh, factor was when literally the only monies available to the four B at the time was uh, over. Maybe 1.2 million, yes. but yet 44 percent represents over three million dollars of the issue. Yes. So, do you recall how that? Yeah, and actually, y'all are from? like a page or two ahead of me and everything. Okay. And so we'll uh, we'll get to the original financing, how the money was broken out, and how those percentages uh, came about. Uh, and just to answer your question real quick, the reason why it's 44 percent now, or less than half, um, is because in 2010 <laughs> we stripped out the 4A corporations um, part of that debt. And so now the only participants were the city and the 4B corporation. So the percentages now change. Right. No, I, I get that. Yes. Sir. And, and so, we'll so move on and actually, yeah, you're, you're, exactly, you're exactly right. You're a page ahead of me. Right. So, <laughs> um, um, uh, maybe I talk too slow. But it's, um, uh, we have, um, okay, now we're going to get into the, the 8.5 million certificate obligation series 2008. Um, uh, this was originally structured as a 20-year issuance issued in the summer of 2008. Um, uh, the the left-hand side there, just on a fiscal year basis, uh, September uh, fiscal year ending September 30th, the annual payments for the original 8.5 million dollar issuance um, was structured uh, as such, going out to 2008. The reason why I'm starting in 2011 because the restructuring happened in 2010, and so I just wanted to show. The comparison between had we kept it originally on was scheduled versus the restructuring that ended up having to occur for the 4A corporation. So um, the total payments for the 8.5 million dollars there, as you can see in 2011, is 633 thousand um, dollars, and then and then uh, uh, moves on up as time progresses. The the reason why the city and the 4A and 4B corporation wanted kind of an, an accelerating sort of a repayment plan. Because again, the, the intent back then, there was a lot of high hopes that the sales tax revenues were going to start picking up. I know we're, we're all excited about I think that's right, when water burger is going to come and other things are going to come after that too. Um, and so the, the intent was to um, let, I guess, future um, uh, uh, citizens of Florida also participate in those improvements that took place. So we go over here to the, to the, the, the right side of the column. How was that $8.5 million uh, shared? The, the, the way we came up with the percentages was that when the financing started to take shape, the city had some needs, the 4A corporation had some needs, and the 4B corporation had some needs. Um, and so these percentages, the way they were um, uh, developed basically or determined was by how much of that $8.5 million went to the city, went to the 4A corporation, and then went to the 4B corporation. Uh, and so um, here, this is the way it was originally shared, the $8.5 million, this is how much each entity uh, received. And so the 4A Corporation, of course, was the, the largest uh, beneficiary participant of the original 2008 issuance because they're going to construct the community center. So the $8.5 million, uh, they received 59% of the $8.5 million. So they're the larger, the majority um, uh, holder of that, um, of that debt. The other participant was uh, the 4B Corporation, which is the next column there. Uh, they received 18% of that $8.5 million that was originally issued uh, for their needs. Uh, and you can see the, the annual payments there. Then on the far right, the city also had some needs. 
uh, and utilize 23% of the $8.5 million uh, that was originally borrowed. And so that's how those percentages were originally determined and broken out, dependent on how much did that each entity receive from that original borrowing amount. So this is, if nothing had happened, everything stayed the same, this is what the, what the, for the next 20 years from 2008, what the payment structure would have been like for those 2008 um, certificates of obligation. And each participant there, this is how much they would owe for that total payment. You know, unfortunately, uh, what had happened is that there was a, a restructuring that needed to take place uh, because the 4A Corporation sales tax were not, um, coming in as originally projected and, and predicted uh, uh, by the city and the 4A Corporation. Um, and, and a couple other things happened also that we'll get into here in the next few slides. So what did the series 2008 look like after that restructuring took place in 2010 when we basically, we, we didn't want the 4B Corporation and the city to basically uh, suffer for what was happening with the 4A Corporation. So the best thing to do and the most prudent thing to do was we had to restructure those 4A corporation uh, portion of it. So we, that's the only thing that we stripped out of the 2008 issuance. We left the 4B corporation's payments uh, the same, the, the city's uh, payments the same, because again, these were uh, fixed interest rates that we received and, and it was a very attractive uh, interest rate that we received it was in the 3% range originally in 2008 for this issuance. And so, um, uh, so, so really, it was really just at the time the 4A Corporation was going through some issues, and so we wanted to leave the 4B Corporation, the city, um, as is because we thought that was just the most fair thing to do. So, we ended up stripping out the 4A Corporation's um, ongoing uh, debt obligations uh, starting in 2011 forward, and as you can see there now the percentage has changed because now the the 4A Corporation doesn't participate in that debt; it's just the 4B in the city. So now this is where we come up with the 44% for the 4B and then the 56% for the city there. So the 2008 issuance is still outstanding, but there, there's only two participants, uh, 4B and then the city right now. The 4A was basically removed from that uh, bond issue. But, but Victor, while that occurred, but, uh, referring back to your phase four, the 4A corporation still got its obligation yes, sir. for the land purchase. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So that's continued. Yes, sir. Consistently. Yes, sir. It has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So kind of rethink when they saw it in trouble in 2009 and all, they basically kicked the can down the road, hoping for some improvement. Yes, sir. That that's that's one of the options that was on the table, basically. And we'll talk about what the what the options were were available to not only the the 4A corporation but also the city. Yeah, right. And so, so, so this is where we're at. You know, right now, uh, unless the 4B and the city decide to refinance the $8.5 million, right now there's no need to because it's an attractive rate. Uh, these are what the payments are going to be until 2008 because this is a fixed interest rate on these bonds. Okay, now let's let's try to delve in a little bit on the 4A Corporation and its sales tax trend. Um, again, just to provide some background in history. You know, 2007, 2008, you know, not only was the nation doing good, the taxes were doing good, you know, the, the real estate boom was happening everywhere, you know, uh, 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 things were humming and going. Um, and then um, when we issued that 2008 issuance, I believe it was in the August uh, time frame, the next month, you know, we have some bankers here, they, they, they know the history. Uh, the next month, as you all know, you know, uh, uh, Bear Stearns goes bankrupt, uh, uh, Lehman Brothers goes bankrupt, all these big financial institutions go bankrupt and all started stemming from the subprime mortgage crisis and the mortgage crisis. And so that's the backdrop there. The, the city, just the month before everything started crashing, that's the reason why I was able to get such an attractive interest rate of 3.2. Um, the next month, you know, all these things nationwide started reverberating and it started being felt a, a couple years down the line even in Texas, where the sales tax collections, not only here in Florida, but throughout the state, started stagnating or started coming down. So that, I just want to show you the backdrop. In 2008, when the issuance was first um, uh, issued, as you can see, those original debt payments were going to get larger and larger because we thought there was going to continue to be growth, as we had seen in the recent history before that. Um, you, know, it, 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 you know, nobody foresaw what happened the next month. And, and just things we just really crashed uh, nationwide. And so here, just looking at the 4A Corporation, because that's where the issue started, and that's why we had to do the restructuring. 
and you can see that in 2008, the, the sales tax collections were just under $400,000, about $393,000 on a calendar year basis. 2009, this is where things started being felt here, not in Florida, but throughout Texas, where the sales tax, where it had a history of growing, pretty much stagnated, and was just at $404,000. The next year was the problem year, um, uh, and again, stagnation, in the sales tax collection, just $408,000 for that 2010 year. Fortunately, since that time, there's been some growth, some pretty rapid growth, and, and you know, we could thank the Uniform Shell play for that because we're feeling the, the benefits by way of sales tax here. So we bolded here, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 two, um, the year 2010 because that's when the issues were probably realized and said, okay, we need to do something because next year we're not going to have enough revenue as a 4A corporation to <coughs> make our debt obligations. And so, so, so just want to give you that backdrop. So now we're in the year 2010. Our sales tax collection is only $408,000. A couple of things happened. Not only did the sales tax collection not, wasn't enough to make debt service payments, but uh, some decisions at the 4A Corporation side were, were made um, that did not help the situation. And so if you go to the next page here, page um, 11, because I know that I mean, this is everybody's question, why did the 4A Corporation have to restructure its bond payments in 2010? Why can it just keep it that way and, and just move it down, down the line? We had a good interest rate back in 2008. Well, again, there, there's, there's two factors. The one that really kind of tipped the Fourier Corporation off the edge was that once the community center was built around the 2010 time frame, there were enough funds to equip the building. You know, you can't just build it. You have to have you know, furniture and things inside of it. Um, but the funds initially did not go far enough as they had anticipated. They wanted to build the building also equip it with those bond proceeds. Um, what turned out was that after it was built, there was still some need to equip it. And um, a quick solution uh, that was made in 2010 by the Ford Corporation was that they borrowed a five-year note, basically, from Bank of America directly. That was a five-year term. They borrowed five hundred thousand um, dollars, specifically to equip and furnish the newly built community center. Um, I, I'm not laying blame on, 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 on people. I'm not. I'm, I'm not here to do that. Uh, but but I have to tell you the, the truth, really, because people would see me. Well, why did you let them do it? Um, we were not aware of this financing that had taken place. Um, government entities typically, especially cities, what they do when they want to get into debt, um, and they have to, it's going to take them longer than a 12-month period to repay that debt. Um, uh, the, the, the 4B has more, um, uh, 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 I guess, um, uh, re, uh, not as much restrictions to, to have to go through the bond process and everything. There's also, and some cities might just go into these loans where they're not really not supposed to, not really knowing what, what the rules are. But, Basically, that's what happened with the Fourier Corporation. They needed to equip it. They needed to furnish it. The quickest solution was to go to Bank of America, get this $500,000 five-year repayment loan, um, and the average annual payments was just over $100,000. And so we were not a consultant on that until after it happened, after the, the money were already received. You can't do anything at that point. And the money were pretty much already spent on the facility. The second thing of what we talked about, the, the sales tax collections with the projections that the 4A and the city um, uh, were planning on in 2007, 2008, when all these original planning started happening, um, uh, you know, and again, nobody saw, foresaw the crash and the economic slowdown. That's the other thing that kind of tipped things over the edge, where the sales tax collections weren't coming in enough to make that debt service payment. In 2011, when the city called us in late, uh, early summer 2010 and said, you know, we have a problem, we need to find some alternatives to fix it. Um, uh, the projected sales tax, because we had seen the last two years just pretty much stagnate, the projected sales tax was for the net upcoming year in 2011 was $410,000 that the 4A Corporation was going to collect in sales tax. Well, remember, we already had borrowed the 2008 issuance, and that annual payment was going to be scheduled already $375,000. 
But then, you know, we also had the land payment that we, we the 4A Corporation had due, about $85,000. And then again, the thing that tipped everything over the edge was that Bank of America loan. And now, all of a sudden, uh, what we owed, or the 4A Corporation owed, was just under $560,000. And of course, 410 isn't going to cover it, so there is a deficit, a planned deficit for this upcoming year, cash flow deficit of about $150,000 is what the 4A Corporation and the city uh, were, were looking at. And I say the city because remember the serious 2008 issuance was their certificate obligation at the end of the day. It's the city's um, responsibility or obligation to make those payments. And so we were approached by the city and the 4A Corporation in the early summer of 2010 and said, what's our alternatives? This is looking pretty dire here. There's a cash flow deficit of $150,000 starting next year. We can't meet our obligations. Um, so we go to the next page. What were the alternatives at the time for the 4A Corporation and for the city knowing that it now has to pay $85,000 a year for the land payment $375,000 for the building itself, uh, and then all of a sudden the $100,000 loan uh, payment for the uh, equipment and furniture for the community center. So what were the, the, the options, uh, legal options available to the city that we presented to them? The first one, which would have been, uh, I guess, technically and, and, and going through all the steps, is going to be the easiest option. The first option would have been because the certificate obligation was really the, the city's obligation credit-wise and security-wise. The first step would, again, we talked about self-supporting. We know that the Ford Corporation, which is our self-supporting revenue, isn't enough to make this debt obligation that the city issue. So what do we do? Well, the, the quick and the easiest thing was to raise our INS or a debt service tax rate sufficient enough to make up for that shortfall. That was the, that's usually that's the, the first and, and easiest thing to do because you don't have to you know uh, get a financial advisor monitoring do a whole transaction a whole restructuring you, you you know if the city was willing at the time could have raised its INS tax rate to collect enough property taxes to make that debt service payment for you and make up for that shortfall. Um, and, and I'm, I'm the one that doesn't live here, as you all know. Um, the the tax rate at the city has been pretty consistent for over ten years. Um, you know, fortunately, there's been some property value growth to, to maybe allow you a little bit of flexibility to keep that tax rate the same because it's an inverse relationship. As your property values grow, your tax rate could go down and then vice versa. Um, 